They were designed to give families more options when it comes to quality public education. Now, D.C. has one of the biggest charter school systems in the country, but a WUSA 9 investigation is revealing some families are complaining about chaos within those schools. Here's investigative reporter Eric Flack. I need to deny the charter renewal application of City Arts and Brown from the charter school, meaning that the school will close the last day of the current school year. You could hear a pin drop on this night back in December. Aye. When Washington, D.C.'s only K-8 performing arts school, City Arts and Prep Public Charter School, was shut down by the city's charter school board. The motion to deny the charter application. It almost felt like a funeral. Can you do this now? Um, can you give me 10 minutes? Wait, give me five minutes. Just like that. We first met City Arts and Prep Executive Director Lynette Daly Reese inside that charter school. Off? She was working so time. hard to and say. We're going to move on. Two, three, and. And being able to walk into the arts wing and watch kids who are fourth and fifth grade sing their hearts out or, you know, step into the theater room and watch kids act and do monologues. Those are the things that made me fall in love with City Arts. Here, the school integrates music, art, and drama. I thought I thought. I thought I thought. Unique New York. Unique New York. With traditional classroom learning. First word, beware. Beware. What these students most needed to beware of, D.C.'s public charter school board, seven men and women with the power to shut down their school. Charter schools are like traditional public schools in that they're free and open to all children. But charter schools operate independently from public school districts like DCPS, so they can design their own programs and curriculum to meet student needs. But here's the thing, charter schools are still funded by taxpayers, so there has to be some oversight. And that falls to the Public Charter School Board, which actually has the ability to shut a charter school down if its test scores aren't high enough. 11-year-old Jazara Wise was scoring low at her old school, mostly her mom says because she was bullied and felt like she didn't fit in. All that changed when she got to City Arts. How much better was it there than at your last school? Way better. What was so way better about it? That it didn't get bullied and that it has arts <laughs> and that I have good friends. Now Jazara is an honor roll student. Her biggest stress these days? When someone gets out of step during the class performance. Yes. Be quiet, the news is reporting me. The news is reporting me. Shh, I got a mic on me. <laughs> the smiles at City Arts mask worry behind the scenes about those scores that fell short of requirements. I just believe that what we did here was more valuable than this idea of meet the 50% or you're close. 50% is the measuring stick for nearly all charter schools in Washington, D.C., under what's known as the Performance Management Framework, or PMF. The PMF is the aggregated score of a charter school's performance, based on things like test scores and attendance. Charter schools must score a 50% or better, or face losing their charter and closing. City Arts' most recent rating falling just short of that mark at 46.3%. These are certainly not any decisions that we take lightly. At its 15-year review, the Charter School Board gathered for the decisive vote about whether to revoke City Arts Charter. But I'll also add the real performance concerns and academic concerns I have for a school that has been around for 15 years. City Arts argued its PMF score was improving up four points since the previous year, trending toward that magical 50% mark, and that test scores for at-risk students were actually higher than many of its peer schools. Even a low-performing school will have extraordinary teachers, and even a low-performing school will have some students who are thriving at that school. In fact, we found 17 other D.C. charter schools with lower scores than City Arts and Prep. But Scott Pearson, the board's executive director, said that's because it's a sliding scale. And the way the law is written, the longer a school has been around, the tougher the standards become. At a charter school's 15-year review, if the scores are below that 50% threshold, no matter how slight, 
Pearson says the board has no choice but to shut the school down. Personally, um, I think it would, it would have been nice um, to have the flexibility at 15 years to, um, to give a school uh, a chance if, if they demonstrated to us that they could improve. But the way our law is written, we have a lot more flexibility with schools at five years and 10 years than we do at 15. Despite that, City Arts spent 18 months and more than $60,000 in legal fees trying to stay open. That 15-year rule confusing even some board members. I'm not sure why we would ask a school to go through all the work it requires to come before this body uh, if there's no discretion in our vote. I don't know why we would actually have a vote if the outcome was predetermined. <laughs> Still, other board members had concerns that went beyond the scores themselves, saying in-school visits revealed chaotic classrooms and disinterested teachers. Um, as, or as to uh, what uh, are not uh, consistently uh, strong instructional uh, environments. And in a split 5-2 to two vote, the board revoked the charter of City Arts and Prep. It will close for good. June 14th. Just give me 30 seconds of what you're feeling right now. Um, I can't. I'm sorry. Teachers and parents were devastated. <sighs> school leaders shell shocked. Don't keep calling us a family school. We're not. And I think that's the part that's unfair. And unfair for Jazara Wise, who loses her outlet for the performing arts and the classmates she loves sharing them with. I felt sad. What was it about the loss of the school that hit you hardest? That I want to see my friends anymore. Still searching for a new school, worried she will never find all deep in what she had here. The 400 kids are going to leave City Arts this year. Are they better off where they're going? That's the question. Are they better off where they're going? And if the answer is no, then what are we doing? We did some homework and discovered 43 different DC public charter schools have been forced to close their doors in the last decade alone, putting more than 11,000 students out on the street. Anecdotally, we know when families lose a charter school option like City Arts, often they just revert to their neighborhood school. Adam, even when that neighborhood school might have lower test scores than the charter school they were just at. Yeah, that doesn't really seem fair because it's not like they can just bounce to a different school. No, and there's a lot more to this story, Adam. So tomorrow night at 11, we press the charter school board on whether this system is really in the best interests of their students. It's an interview you're going to want to see. Yeah, sounds pretty revealing. Eric Flack, thank you.